Turn now to the security measures being taken surrounding Trump's court appearance tomorrow in Miami. Seeing as Carlos Suarez is live from uh, Doral, uh, Florida, outside the Trump Doral Hotel. Uh, Carlos, um, city officials say they're working with all levels of law enforcement. Uh, we have heard that the Proud Boys, that far right militia group, uh, they're expected to be there. Are, are police preparing to handle any potential violence? Well, if you ask that question to Miami's police chief, he would tell you yes. According to the chief of police out here, he says that they have enough resources and officers to deal with a crowd of up to 50,000 people that might show up to the federal courthouse tomorrow. Now, when press for specifics, the chief of police said that is something that his police department is not going to get into. There is a growing concern at this hour whether law enforcement across South Florida is ready to deal with the possible crowd of both supporters of the former president as well as protesters who might show up outside of the federal courthouse in downtown Miami. At this hour, there are few barricades outside of this courthouse, and it is still unclear whether Miami police plan to separate the supporters of the former president from the folks that are going to be out there protesting the former president. Here now is the chief of police at a news conference uh, earlier this afternoon. We're bringing enough resources to handle crowd anywhere from 5,000 to 50,000. We don't expect any issues, right? So we appreciate uh, the public self, everybody going out there and expressing themselves in a peaceful and civil manner. And so the chief of police really uh, pushed back on some questioning there about exactly just uh, where all of these resources are at this hour, when we might expect to see them outside of this courthouse. The chief ended up saying, look, a lot of these decisions we're going to make really will depend on exactly how many people turn out tomorrow. Uh, Jake, there was a, a, about a, a crowd of about 100 uh, Trump supporters outside of the Doral property out here earlier this afternoon. Uh, at one point this afternoon, some of those folks got out onto the street. However, uh, police here were able to get everyone back on to a sidewalk. Jake? Um, Carlos, have any officials noticed, noted any concerning signs uh, by extremist groups uh, online of possible threats? Well, it's our understanding, according to uh, law enforcement sources, that a group of FBI agents have been tasked with uh, going uh, across, uh, going through social media posts for any possible threats to the federal courthouse in downtown Miami. Uh, we're told that they're also taking a look at some communications between members of the Proud Boys uh, because they were talking about traveling to South Florida ahead of tomorrow. However, just about every law enforcement official that we've talked to, including the chief of police for the city of Miami, said that right now there are no credible threats to Miami. All right, Carlos Suarez in Doral, Florida. Thank you so much. Joining us now to further explain the security concerns over Trump's arraignment is Jay Johnson, former Secretary of Homeland Security during the Obama administration. Uh, Secretary Johnson, thanks for joining us. So Miami officials say they're prepared sure. for tomorrow, but some of the officials, uh, former officials that we've had here in studio watching what's going on in Miami seemed alarmed, noting that there's just yellow tape uh, in some areas, a few plastic barriers, uh, but nothing like what we saw in New York. Um, given what happened at the U.S. Capitol on January 6th, given the calls to violence that we've heard uh, in the bellicose language uh, from many, many Trump supporters, including members of Congress, um, do you think that's sufficient or should they be barricading and preparing for the worst? Well, the downside to all this, Jake, is there hasn't been a whole lot of time to prepare for this. Uh, the indictment just came down late last week. Normally, in a situation like this, law enforcement wants a lot of time to provide adequate security. I am quite sure that right now, as we speak, uh, elements of the U.S. government, the Department of Homeland Security, U.S. Marshals, Federal Protective Service, Secret Service, the FBI, along with local law enforcement in Miami-Dade, are, are thinking this through, are erecting a erecting, hopefully, the appropriate barriers. They know that community best. Uh, as you touched on it, I'm sure they're actively monitoring social media. But we do have to anticipate uh, a potentially large crowd here, particularly given some of the rhetoric from some of our so-called public officials over the last few days. But I've, I've been down to Miami-Dade to oversee active shooter training exercises. It's a complicated jurisdiction, but there's a lot of resources down there.
Well, some of the rhetoric we've heard um, from members of Congress uh, and also from the Proud Boys and others are, are rather alarming. Um, now, obviously, people have a First Amendment right uh, to express themselves, and the mayor of Miami, Francis Suarez, stressed the importance of letting people use their free speech. Um, is there a way, do you think, to, to keep this from getting out of control? Jake, that is probably my principal concern right now. Some of the rhetoric we've heard over the last couple of days has been over the top, dangerously irresponsible, as some of these extremists in public life seek to outdo each other. That kind of rhetoric makes unacceptable behavior acceptable and, frankly, violence inevitable. And, you know, I can understand the impulse of some of our leaders, some of our rational leaders, to avoid engaging uh, and responding to this kind of thing. But I do think there comes a responsibility, frankly, uh, by federal officials who lead federal law enforcement to really speak out against this and call it out and say to those who are engaging this kind of dangerous rhetoric, uh, say if somebody gets hurt, we are going to, within the fullest extent of the law, seek to hold you uh, responsible. It is a federal crime to threaten a federal official in the conduct of their office. It is a federal crime to incite an insurrection. And so uh, we've got to look to not just the Proud Boys and those who are on the ground, who might be on the ground in Miami Day tomorrow, but also those who are, frankly, inciting and encouraging this kind of violence. When you look at the charges against Donald Trump in the indictment, uh, as somebody once charged with the safety of the American people, um, both at the Department of Homeland Security, but then also uh, prior in your career when you were uh, an undersecretary uh, at the Pentagon. Um, how alarmed are you at the those classified documents um, being stored in such a reckless way uh, and being sh shown off to uh, individuals uh, that are uh, just visiting Donald Trump? Well, in addition, Jake, I was also, years and years ago, a federal prosecutor hired by none other than Rudy Giuliani in Manhattan. Uh, it's surreal to know that there are TS-level, highly classified, compartmentalized documents uh, lounging around in, in bankers' boxes, in storage bins uh, at Mar-a-Lago that the former president, uh, it seems, showed off to various people. Um, we handle classified information in Washington in the most secure fashion in skips. We don't talk about it outside of skips. And for Donald Trump to undertake to do this uh, is alarming. I'm concerned about the, the fallout from this. You know, an interesting challenge, Jake, uh, when this case goes to trial, and I'm certain it will, will be how do you share uh, this information with with 12 lay jurors who were randomly selected off the street. So they appreciate uh, the gravity of what uh, former President Trump has done. There's a procedure for doing this called SEPA, the Classified Information Procedures Act. But uh, to try to show redacted, redacted versions of this stuff or substitutes, I think is going to be a challenge in this case.